In this week's On My Shelf, I'm talking about two fantastic middle grade graphic novels, a parenting book that all people who are in contact with little boys should read, a healthy eating challenge, how I survived a writing crisis, and a fascinating series on the human brain. I'm not a big fan of graphic novels, but lately I've been reading some middle grade ones that are just fantastic. Two of the ones I've most recently finished are The Great American Dust Bowl by Don Brown and Roller Girl by Victoria Jamison, both of which earned Newbery honors. The Great American Dust Bowl is a nonfiction story about the 1930s natural disaster that was caused by too much dust and some other environmental factors. The Dust Bowl took lives and livestock and homes and livelihoods, and Brown portrayed that perfectly in his beautifully drawn pages and the sparse text. It was a great book to teach kids about a historical tragedy that came to America's Southern Plains. I found that I even teared up at one point, even though I know about this history. But not only was Brown's writing beautiful, his pictures also moved me. My boys read this one in a night and talked nonstop about everything that had happened during the Dust Bowl. Graphic novels are a great way to teach kids about their historical roots. Roller Girl is a story of friendship and finding oneself in adolescence. Astrid, who is 12, is best friends with Nicole. For as long as she can remember, they have done everything together. And then Astrid's mom takes them both to see a roller derby game, and Astrid is so enamored with the sport that she signs up for a camp to learn how to play. She's disappointed that Nicole doesn't sign up with her. Astrid journeys through the summer, struggling to learn the ins and outs of roller derby, how to stand on her own without the best friend she's had forever, and just how much middle school will change her life. I loved Astrid. She was a fantastically drawn character, not just in the physical sense, but in the story sense. Jamison had beautiful il illustrations, and even though this story was about a girl, my boys loved reading it because of the pictures. Lately, I've been immersed in a parenting book called Wild Things, The Art of Nurturing Boys by Stephen James and David Thomas because, of course, I only have sons, and sometimes they do things that are so foreign to me that I really want to understand. Gosh, I would recommend this book to anyone who has even the smallest interactions with a boy. These guys really know boys. They are therapists who work specifically with boys and men, and the wisdom that is contained within these pages is just phenomenal. I'm so glad that a friend recommended I read this book. There's so much about identity and calling out over our children the names that describe them rather than the names that can break them. I just can't say enough about it. Pick it up if you interact with boys. More people need to understand the heart and mind of our boys. My husband and I recently started this 33-day food challenge where we've completely cut out sugar from our lives. This probably wasn't quite as hard for him as it was for me because, well, I really like chocolate. Our normal diet is already extremely healthy, but there were some places where we were slipping a little, like in the treat department. So we've challenged ourselves to go 33 days without eating any treats. The first few days were torture. We had just gotten back from a weekend at my mom's house, and like any vacation, we'd sort of gone a little crazy. So getting back on the wagon was really tough. We were walking grouches, but we're about two weeks in with three weeks to go, and I can say that I'm feeling much better. It's amazing how much a proper diet affects your mood and your energy and even your ability to handle children. I'm sure those first few days of our detox, our kids thought we were the worst parents in the world, but now I feel like we have a much better handle on our reactions. Diet really does make a difference. I go through these cycles as a writer. Sometimes I think I'm doing really well. I run six blogs and I'm not looking at any of the stats and so I'm just doing it to do it. I'm just writing what's on my heart and what I need to say and I don't really care if it's something only my mom will read. And then sometimes I have these days and weeks where the stats really matter. That happened a couple of weeks ago. I started noticing that my newsletter open rates had gone down. I started noticing that people weren't really paying much attention to the thousands of words I give away every week on blogs and creative pictures and social media content. And I started to get really down, wondering why in the world I spend six hours a week creating all of this content that no one really even seems to care about. I wanted to give up. And I almost did. 
And then I started talking about it with my husband. And he started asking me what I would give up if I were really going to do it. And I thought about all those blogs and how they keep a record of everything my family has dealt with in parenting and how I get to write my letters to people in my life and maybe one or two people are healed because of them. What does it really matter if there are only a few paying attention? The few who are paying attention are the right ones. So I made it through the crisis. That's not to say that a crisis like that won't ever happen again because it will. I know because it's happened before. But what writers have to remember is that regardless of how many people are paying attention to their words, someone is being changed by them, even if it's only ourselves. That's value enough for all the people in our lives. My husband and I have been watching The Brain with David Eagleman, which is a series that aired on PBS. Eagleman is a neuroscientist. He wrote a companion book that we read a few weeks ago while we were waiting for the DVD to be put on hold at our lo local library because there were like 200 holds. This is a fascinating series. Even though Eagleman is a neuroscientist, he makes the brain science really simple and understandable. He details all of his experiments, which are really interesting, and also the latest research about brains. We've enjoyed every episode we've watched and have even tried a few of the experiments on our children. We've learned so much about the brain, and it's fun to be armed with all this information now. And a little creepy, too, because I'm not really sure if I exist at all, or if I'm just a figment of my rich imagination. Still, I'd recommend the series, unless it doesn't exist either. For more about me or my books, sign up for my email newsletter, where I share an inside look at life and projects I'm working on and the current novel of the year. If you have any questions about writing or books, or how I managed to run a writing career with six little ones. Leave them in the comments and I'll get to them in future episodes. For more on my shelf, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.